Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Follow Your Passion podcast. I'm your host, Erwin Wils. I'm a mindset business strategist and founder of Millionaire Life Strategy. In this podcast, I'm interviewing my clients and other entrepreneurs that are following their passion and make a good living out of it. When you want to know more about me or what I can do for you, check out my website, millionairelifestrategy.com. But first, check out this episode of Follow Your Passion. Hello, everybody, and welcome at a new episode of Follow Your Passion. Uh, Let me introduce my guest of today. Her name is Shannon Villalba. She's the heart-strong lawyer, as she calls herself. Shannon is a business and intellectual property lawyer and intuitive business design coach who's living in her genius zone. She's absolutely lost what she does, educating and empowering entrepreneurs. Shannon has a unique approach to business as she develops unique business and legal strategies integrated with the chakras, the heart song chakra framework. So her clients can create a business that is aligned with the visions for their lives. She's been given a second chance as a cancer survivor of a rare cancer, and she's grateful to be able to share her knowledge with other entrepreneurs. And if you go to her website, I love how she calls herself. She calls herself an accidental entrepreneur with a law degree. Welcome, Shannon. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So tell me about this being an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> sure. Uh, I Well, I was an, an artist before I was a lawyer. And I noticed that you know, I wanted to be a music video for a music video director. And I mm-hmm. was in the music industry and I was a graphic artist music video editor, those kind of things. And then I realized that I didn't want to actually pursue that career. So I moved from Los Angeles to Ohio where my parents were. And they were like, can you help us with our business? I was like, "Um, I'm an artist. I'm not anything to do with business. I I, I don't know what to do, but they needed help. And so I started helping them with their business, which was a property management company. Mm -hmm. And they owned a a really big apartment complex. And I had to learn how to, you know, you know, deal with, with rents and, and people and (laughs) um, go to court, you know, to get evictions or do other things. And, and so I learned a lot about law. And because of that, I started learning more about business and contracts and things like that. And, mm-hmm. and of course, you know, being an, an artist, I was re- really interested in copyrights and trademarks. Yeah, yeah. And finally, I learned the landlord tenant law so well that my attorney was like, you need to go to law school. You need <laughs> to live with law school. And I said, well, you know, I think that's a great idea. If I go to law school, then... I'm going to go to law school to protect people like my parents who are business owners and artists like me. And I think it'd be great if I had my own company, you know, so I can kind of dictate, you know, how my career is going to go. And that's how I ended up being a lawyer and an accidental entrepreneur, because thankfully my parents gave me that opportunity <laughs> nice. to take the world of entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get what you what you're saying because I never intended to become an entrepreneur as well. Yet I'm already uh, down seven years in the business and I'm loving every minute of it. So I can totally relate to that. So, yeah. um, where did the the chakras enter your business? Well, I've always been a very spiritual person. I've been studying the chakra system and crystals since about 2001, mm. and 2000, um, mm. formally. Like I and um, I started thinking about, you know, especially with the cancer that I went through. I use a lot of the therapies that I had um, learned, you know outside of, you know, through my personal interests. So learning Mm -hmm. how to balance my chakras, using color, using crystals to help heal. Mm -hmm. And 
I just kind of had this epiphany once when I was just sitting on the beach, like watching the waves. And I was thinking about my own business and where it was going. And I started thinking about um, the soul of the business. And I was like, well, if technically if a business is its own entity, can it have its own chakra system? And if it does have its own chakra system, what would it look like? And then I just started understanding more like how the chakra system works within the person can also work within a business entity. And and it also makes it easier to understand, especially if, if you're more a creative thinker like I am and you can you need a little bit more uh, a stimulus to actually comprehend how things work. And when I was putting it together, I was like, oh, this totally makes sense. So like if you have your foundations, you have your contracts and you have your business systems and you know your lawyers, like your accountants, all of those people there in your foundations, and then you move up to your copyrights and your sacral and your solar plexus is your trademarks and your heart is all your relationships. And 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 then if you apply those to contracts and other business concepts, then you can see like, oh yeah, that's right. That's why my crown chakra is all marketing and connection to the world. You know, and then it flows all the way down. And I'm like, oh, well then if you start looking at let's let's run a business that way, then it becomes a little bit more manageable instead mm. of becoming so overwhelmed because then it becomes easier. Like, oh okay, I need to be working on my solar plexus, my brand. So what other things do I need? Okay. I need to look, I need to be cognizant of my trademark. I need to be looking at how can I protect my trademark? Oh, well, I, I need to register it. Oh, I need to, you know, license it. I need to have non-disclosure agreements. If I have confidential information and that goes up to your, you know, your heart, because it goes through your relationships, but then also goes down your route because the contract is a foundational document. So nice. if you look at it that way, it's all of a sudden it just becomes like, oh, it's a lot easier to run a business when I can understand these legal ex- concepts. I can understand these business concepts because like, especially when you're, you're just starting out, you're, you're, it can be overwhelming. Like with all the things that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it, it's. I never thought of it, but it, it, it makes so perfect sense. And it's actually funny because in my business and also in thing uh, when I'm giving a training or whatever, and I need to explain something to 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 my clients or my trainees or whoever is sitting there, I love to use uh, metaphors, right? Mm-hmm. To to use it in a language they. I can understand and relate to so that it's easy to translate it from this metaphor to their own situation or business. And it's actually what you're more or less do as well by, by using the chakras in, in, in the person as a metaphor to a business. Yes. And then you can explain how, how it should work. Like you said, you know, you have to have a, a solid foundation mm-hmm. and once you can once your foundation is 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 solid and is ready, you know you can take it to the next level, mm-hmm. and so it 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 it, totally, it makes perfect sense to me. But I I've never thought of this uh, this way. So thank you for explaining that. Um, so it it seems like a very um, odd combination in a sense that there are a lot of presuppositions that people have about lawyers and and, and other uh, occupations, of course, and combining the, the creativeness of an artist and the law as a, as a lawyer and the spirituality together makes you uh, very unique, I guess. How, how do your clients look? Uh, do, do they have a certain presupposition when they first meet with you? And do they tell that? Yeah, I, I 
I, I mean, I guess I always am like, like attracts like, you know, high vibe entrepreneurs always find me and they really enjoy the, my perspective on things. And yeah, I am extremely different. So my, my ideal clients are similar to me. And when I can talk to them about the chakra system or having crystals in their business, they're all like, oh, that's great. Uh, I definitely <laughs> want to see is they're more, they're very, they're very well-rounded. So, nice. you know, it's, it's interesting because like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not your typical lawyer at all. And I'm here to serve those people out there who find law intimidating and make it easier for them to understand. And, and, you know, once you have that education, then nobody can ever take that away from you. And that's what I want to do. I want to empower entrepreneurs. Yeah. Nice. So w- would you say that your ideal um, client is a spiritual and creative background, but doesn't want to be bothered with the law? Well, not necessarily. Some of them have like spiritual leanings and they, they're more of the holistic entrepreneur. Mm. They had, they, understand that there's so much more to a business than just the business legal financial there's there's you know they see it as an entity they see it as part of their dream part of their persona and they understand that it's a a, an entity that needs to be cultivated and nurtured like a child and mm-hmm. they also have like a worldly perspective and it's, they just might not know a lot about the law and they know that it's necessary and they're eager to learn. And that's why I love working with them because they just love learning about how they, they, they can take their business to the next level because they have that legal education or they have that business education that I'm giving yeah. them. Nice. Nice. And it's, um oh, I, I just thought of something, but it, it slipped my mind again. Um it, it makes sense to to have entrepreneurs that are open-minded and wanting to grow. And it's um I recognize it that that people are more grounded, you know, when when, when you work with them and when they're they're looking at at, at the whole picture. And it's it's also, and that that's what's coming back to my mind again. If people start a business, they are the business, right? Yeah. So if I talk with with my clients as well, we're talking about vision, mission, core values, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the cases, their core values, their vision, their mission is what are the company's vision, mission, and core values, right? And why should it change when you're building, when you're growing your business, right? It's still the same basis. Mm-hmm. So it, you can actually look at it as an entity because the person who created the business is, well, you could almost say is the business. So why treat it differently, right? Right. Right. Yeah. I, and and it, exactly what you're saying. Like I've seen that even in my own business, my own mission, my own values, they all get integrated into my business. And, and when you're, when you take that chakra framework system and you say, okay, here's, you know, the chakra system for your business, here's my vi- vision, here's my values. Then you're more, you're looking at your business more as in a holistic perspective. And you know, when you're an entrepreneur, your business is so much a part of you. And even when you start growing and scaling you, and you start adding other people's en- energies to it, then it becomes its own, its own entity itself, like a child, but it's got other, it's got other people's input into it. And so you have to take that into consideration too, especially like when, like when I was talking about like your heart chakra, with your relationships, with your contracts, and, you know, if you're adding people into your business, like you have to consider, you know, if you're, if they're going to be spending time with you, or they're going to be working with you and you're going to be building this business, like let's put it down into writing so that everybody has clear communication, you know, with your throat chakra and you do that through contracts. Yeah. 
Nice. And it, it actually, it uh, only talking with you already opens my mind as well, because I'm a, being a mindset strategist, you know, I like to talk about the, uh, the levels or the logical levels of change from the pyramid of Bateson and Dilts. I'm not, uh, are you familiar with that? A little bit. Okay. Well, it, it starts with your, uh, with your purpose, your mission, right? And below that is identity. Then you get your values and beliefs, then your skills, then your behavior and down below is the environment, right? Okay. And I always say that uh, bottom up, it can influence the level above, but you decide in what way it will influence. And top down, it always has, uh, per definition, it has an influence on the lower levels, right? Right. And totally. if, if you change something on the uh, uh, beliefs uh, level, it will definitely have an influence on your behavior and your skills, right? And it's the same with identity. And the most uh, top one is your mission or your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And I certainly made the uh, comparison with uh, Simon Sinek, start with why, okay. right? And that's also the, your why is your purpose, it's your mission. So if you know that and you're following this, this, this pyramid of Bateson and Dilts, it's the same similarity as what you're describing with your chakras in the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have your purpose, your mission, then you have your corporate identity. Then there's the, the, the beliefs and values or your core values. Then you have the skills that your company has, and then it shows certain behavior towards the environment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there are a lot more similarities than we, than we might think uh, there are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is because there was, there were talk, if we're talking like on the business and legal level, we're going to be talking about, you know, the uh, those other concepts like the trademarks and the contracts and, uh, you know, financial systems and legal systems, you know, the protections that you put into place, like trademark registration, copyright registration, licensing contracts, employment contracts, independent contractor contracts, and copyright assignments and you know all of that kind of fun stuff <laughs> that kind of goes up the chakra system but that integrates you know when you think about you know your your vision and your dreams for your business I mean that's going to be your third eye and then you know your visions and dreams and your goals they all you know go back down to your foundational you know what are you putting in your foundation to get to your those goals and 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 how does the how does the world see you? How can you market yourself and how, that through communication? And how can you protect your brand, you know, through the trademarks and copyrights and the contracts? And and they, it all integrates together. So then, when you it's like similar to your your concepts, like once you understand the pyramid, then it's so much easier to be able to do your planning, to do your, your vision for the business, to determine, you know, how to implement different strategies for your, that will further those goals or further those visions, and then, you know, integrate the business all together. And so when you're looking at that business from a holistic perspective, it actually becomes a lot of fun and less intimidating and overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. So if you look at yourself, you know, you have you started out as an artist, then came the, uh, you were already uh, spiritual and you added the, the law to your uh, foundation. Um, mm -hmm. Do you still use all your skills uh, and your talents to run your business and to help your clients? Yeah, actually I do. So I do crystal healing. So I've been studying crystal healing and crystal surgery now for <laughs> almost, yeah, three years, almost, oh no, more like four years or five years. Now I'm thinking about it. It's like 2000, we're in 2023 and yeah pandemic kind of, you know, it was <laughs> <Yeah>. pre-pandemic <laughs> 2018. I started studying formally. And so I love to integrate those, 
things into my business when I'm counseling my clients. I might talk to them about different crystals that they might use or different meditations they might use. I might actually teach them a meditation to use um, or also like because they're inclined that way. They want to learn about different things. And so we just naturally start talking about crystals for business or or using meditation or using affirmations or using mindset techniques, you know, to, to overcome something. And, and I really actually love that because I'm not just talking about boring legal. I'm not talking about boring business. We actually have like a very, really great conversation about, I start getting, and it's interesting because we, we're called counselors and I'm, I hear everything because it's like when people come in for a consultation, I'll hear all the legal stuff. I'll hear the business stuff, but then like all of a sudden something else will come in and I'm like, oh, okay, well then I can understand like what's going on in that person. Like what, you know, is happening that might be affecting the business and how can I help them in some other way? So you know, I'm not just giving the legal advice then I'm also giving, being able to provide them with information regarding um, things that will enhance them and take them to the next level as an entrepreneur so that they can overcome some obstacles in other areas of their lives that might be affecting the business. Nice. And that's, that's the beauty because, um, a lot of times you hear discussions about uh, life coaches and business coaches and what's the difference. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, I, ca I can't separate the two. Right, right, yeah. Because when you're a business coach, you have to help the, per the, the person uh, in the private lives as well because they're, in they're interconnected. You know, you can't uh, yeah. treat them separately, in my opinion. Yeah, As I mean, you're, you're just going to need... You, you especially like it's interesting because like I'm saying seeing it from the lawyer perspective I mean I've I've had clients come and tell me a lot of personal stuff that's going on with them and then I see what's going on with the business I'm like okay well let's see how we can take care of this personal stuff so that we can move on to like with your business especially and I use myself as an example you know like limiting beliefs or imposter syndrome or mm -hmm. any of that everybody always has that you yeah. know, and until we like get rid of those things, then, you know, in all of our aspects of our lives, including our business, that's going to be affected. Yeah. yeah it, it, it also reminds me of a remark. One of my coaches once said, and, and it was like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense because we're habitual people, right? So if we do one thing personally, why should we do that? Uh, why shouldn't we do that in a business as well? You know, mm -hmm. one one of my core beliefs uh, or my core values is keeping my promises, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I express that as I never use the snooze button, right? Because when I set an alarm in the evening to wake up at a certain uh, moment in time in the morning, then I'm making a promise to myself to get up at that certain time, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. if the alarm would ring and I would hit the snooze button, I'm already breaking the first promise I made that day. And it's mm -hmm. a promise I made with myself, right? Yeah. So how can I make sure that I keep my promises with my clients if I'm not keeping a promise I made with myself? <laughs> True. Right? I'm not saying that it's bad to use the snooze button. But I always say, if you need the snooze button to wake up, uh, use the snooze time uh, ahead of time. So if you want to get up at seven and it's seven minutes, then set it at 14 to seven so you can snooze twice. <laughs> and the third time it goes, you get up because you made no agreement with yourself to get up at seven, right? Right. And it's just an example of how, let's say, how my mind works. but. Mm -hmm. That that remark of this this coach, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. It's it's really stuck to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I so, totally <laughs> do do you have do you have any habits that that help you in your business? 
Well, a lot of it for me in my business, I treat my business like a child of mine, like a part of me, I guess. Not, um, and there are times when I like to like have a conversation with my business. And I know that sounds kind of interesting, but I believe that my business has a soul. As I studied with um, a shaman who was talking about and teaching us about how like different things have souls. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. If everything is energy, then that concept stuck with me. And I'm like, how can I communicate with my law firm? And then if I'm thinking again, like my law firm has a chakra system, then I can say, okay, what kind of, how can I balance this chakra system in my business? And then because I just take my own framework and I'm like, okay, well, let's see. I want to work on right, right now I'm working on um, uh, my throat with communication, my throat chakra and that communication, like podcasts and articles and blogs and videos and things like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's right. I'm I'm really needing to balance that chakra. But then I have to go back down to my solar plexus. I'm like, okay, and think about my brand and think about, you know, how do I communicate my core values <laughs> and my and my mission? Because this is this is the my business's brand. And then how do I also bring that out into the world? How do I bring my light of my business out into the world um, through relationships as well? Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking like, I love how that's how I run my business. And what, since I have started using that framework for my business, it's become a lot more personal and more just intimate. Like, I'm not like, oh, this business is a pain in the butt. No, this business is part of me. That is my, I birthed this. I've had my business now for 10 years and it's been by my sign, like an old friend. So they're like <laughs> a child. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, so, uh... and, I, and I realized that I need to take care of it in a certain way that also resonates with who I am. And once I started doing that, it's interesting how, like when we were talking about clients, how people who think the same way, who feel the same way, just started naturally finding me or referring me. And I've built my business on referrals, which is a beautiful thing because definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I've, 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 I've been able to help people like take, you know, really nurture their own businesses and, and, and help see them grow. And it's really fascinating to watch, especially when someone who doesn't know anything about business, who wants to start a business, who then starts a business, who then gains all this knowledge and starts just blossoming like a flower and, and they feel confident and empowered because they have the legal education because they have the business education, but they're also realizing that, you know, this is something that I need to take care of and nurture, you know. Nice. But that also means that you're leading by example because you're, you're applying your own framework to your own business as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people can see it where it, it's working. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So. Where do you see yourself standing in about five years time from now? Oh, this is great because I actually want to build the Heart Song Entrepreneur and Heart Song Lawyer brands. And I want and I did start a podcast as well. So I'm dipping my toes into that. And I'm currently in the process of putting some ideas down for different types of books that I want to do. And Absolutely. I have a course that I'm going to be offering mm -hmm. this year that takes people through the chakra framework and gives them the edu the legal education, but also the kind of more of the esoteric education as well, you know, with meditations and the crystals integrating and all of that to so see how they can implement the chakra framework into their own business 
so that they can really take their businesses um, not not just to the next level, but like to really comprehend and, and understand the nuances that there are in business and not be blindsided. Yeah. And that's what I'm seeing a lot is like using the chakra framework, it 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 lessens some of these like blind sides that you get, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, especially like when you're integrating other people into the business or if you're building a brand, you know, and your your intellectual property, your your once you get that knowledge, then it's kind of like, oh wait. I I'm hiring this person. What type of contract do I need? What kind of provisions would I need in this contract? Oh yeah, that's right. I should probably have a pretty robust intellectual property provision if I'm sharing a lot of confirmation confidential information and I don't do I don't share anything until that person signs it. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And it's it's about well, what you said is about protecting your baby, right? It's your mm -hmm. business. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nice. Absolutely. I had a. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned that with your clients as well, but I, um, um, one of my coaches ran into that, is that if you have a if you have a partner in the business, you know, and and things go sore, then it's very hard to to, um, to make the right agreements. You know how to separate from each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it scares my clients when I tell them, you know, if you're going to partner, uh, make sure you also have an exit strategy, meaning yes. that if things go sore, uh, know who's who gets what, right? Like right. like the interactive property, like your 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 client database, uh, all those kind of things. Uh, because when 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 things are good, it's much easier to make such agreements than yeah. when things go sideways. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's yep. that's exactly what I tell my clients too. Like, especially if they're starting a business, I'm like, okay, let's work on your operating agreement now and your buy sell agreement now, so that if something happens, that there it is, black and white. That's what you agreed to. You know. Yeah, but it's it's it sounds uh, scary and change uh, strange for people because. When you're deciding to uh, uh, to get married with your spouse, you're not talking about the divorce and who gets the dog, right? Right. <laughs> right. Yet in business, it should be common sense, even though you're you're not planning to separate. But it's it's like an insurance policy, right? That mm -hmm. in case something goes sideways, at least you got the papers how to to divide the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really important, especially when you start talking about the sale of a business or the, you know, breaking up of a partnership, or even if somebody passes away, you know, and then you're in a very high emotional state. And it's actually very comforting to have like a document there that says, you know, okay, this, these are the, the procedures of what we need to follow. We agreed to this. And it, it it let's let's get this done, boom, 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 and then you know we can go on our way. Uh, you take the emotion out of it, yeah. Right? Because like we make irrational decisions when we're emotional, but if we already have a blueprint to follow, then it, it's it just becomes so much more yeah, like manageable, especially because I've I've written many operating agreements, many buy sell agreements. And then sure enough, something has happened. They want to sell the business or they're breaking up the partnership or somebody has passed. I'm like, okay, well, these let's look at your foundational documents and then follow that strategy, take the emotion out of it, just keep following, move along. And then, oh yeah, that's right. And I'm like, thank goodness I have this. Yeah. Yeah, and I I guess also that that when the the company is growing and developing itself, you should periodically update the document as well. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. 
Uh, some people, especially like when they're adding members to their LLC, they'll go that so that they'll, they'll stay. They might start out as a single member LLC and then they want to add a member. And then so then I said, OK, let's look at your foundational document. And some lawyers say, oh, you're a single member LLC. You don't need an operating agreement. I'm like, yes, you should. You should, because then you get used to that. You get used to having those formalities. You get used, you understand how you're running your business. I mean, that's why it's called an operating agreement. (laughs) That's how your business operates. So then when you add in a member, then you can update your operating agreement and then and then you know, and and you put add in a buy sell, fund your buy sell, how you're gonna fund your buy sell agreement. You understand all of those things that happen. And 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 you can update it as you add more people or as circumstances change. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I'm I'm afraid you can talk for hours on entrepreneurship and how it's developing because we're both uh, helping empl- um, entrepreneurs to get the best out of themselves in the business. So there's, I guess, there's stuff to talk for ages almost. <laughs> right. Absolutely. If, if if there's one tip or little piece of wisdom that you would like to share with the audience, uh, what would it be, Shannon? So if you're looking at building a brand for your, your business and you're looking at different names or slogans, just do a quick search, do a quick Google search or go to the United States Patent and Trademark Office and do a search there or the uh, registrar for your country and do a search there so that you're not going to be starting out your business like infringing on somebody else's intellectual property rights because I've seen too many brands out there that have come to me and said they've got a cease and desist I have to rebrand and then it becomes a big issue so if you're just starting out and the best thing that you can do is to do a search to see if somebody else has your name that is offering the same goods and services yeah, and that, that's important, you know, that, that's offering the same indeed, because you can have similar names, but in totally different uh, fields or industries. And that's that's fine, as long as there's no conflict, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, it's when it's when you're starting to use it and you're offering the same goods and services, then it becomes a problem. And you don't want to start your business that way. I mean, no, definitely. A, a five minute search could save you thousands of dollars and heartache. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that, that's that's a great piece of advice, especially coming for you, Shannon. So if if people want to know more about you or get in touch with you or follow you, how can you do that? You can go to my website. It's bialbalawfirm.com. Or you can reach out to me on Instagram at HeartSong Heart Song Lawyer Shannon. Or you can look me up on Facebook at Shannon Bialba. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing your, your knowledge and wisdom, uh, Shannon. I really had a great, great time talking to you. It's very inspiring. Um, so thanks again. And let's keep in touch. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you liked this episode. Make sure to check out the other episodes because each one is filled with interesting and inspiring stories and energy. Are you following your passion as well and make a good living out of it? Contact me and you could be my next guest. Would you like to follow your passion but are not there yet? Check out my website millionairelifestrategy.com and book an appointment to discover what I could do for you. Don't forget to share the podcast with your friends so that they get inspired as well. 